Right. We're moving on to Chief O'Hara. Oh, yeah. And Mary Moriarty, <laughs> the county attorney who just got a nice raise. Uh, and this is the story that we've mentioned the other day when four miners were shot uh, while inside a stolen Kia. One of them critically injured because she uh, shot in the head. No arrests have been made, but we'll get to the arrest part in a moment. Uh, Moriarty and the chief, Brian O'Hara, are, are at odds again over how to handle this because O'Hara uh, insists, and I choose to believe him, O'Hara insists that, look, we turn these kids over to you. Uh, two weeks ago, we had two of these kids uh, ready to be uh, suffer consequences and nothing ever happened. You didn't do anything. And Moriarty claims that she did. Uh, on Monday, the Hennepin County's attorney's office released a statement saying, uh, just bear with me, saying the shooting of the kids in the car over the weekend is tragic and unacceptable. We must act with urgency to implement effective solutions to gun violence. Well, this is all gobbledygook and ensure that no one in our community is victimized in any way. The statement went on to say that collaboration was needed to intervene effectively with youth or who are engaged in auto theft related behaviors while saying MPD chief O'Hara inaccurately stated that children under 14 cannot be referred for prosecution. Uh, well, he did. Uh, MPD has not referred any youth. She said MPD has not referred any youth to the uh, safety initiative program in the second quarter of 2024 and has only made four referrals in the third quarter to date. None of the kids age 11 to 13 who were shot while riding in a stolen car over the weekend had been referred to our office by law enforcement for youth auto theft early intervention. The office claims that of the youth served by the early intervention, 81% have had no new cases submitted. Uh, O'Hara said, uh, what did O'Hara say? You want to hear from him? Yes. All right. Good evening. Um, as you know, this weekend, uh, several children were in a stolen vehicle and four of the five kids in that vehicle were shot. I'm thankful none of them were killed this weekend, but I'm also frustrated because this shooting was preventable. The county attorney's office could have taken at least two of these kids off the street 10 days ago prior to this happening. But for whatever reason, they didn't. Our juvenile investigators referred two cases to the county attorney's office involving two of the individuals for felony charges on August 9th. The kids weren't charged. They weren't diverted. And despite pleas from their parents begging for help, begging for them to be detained, they were let back out into the street, into the same environment, to commit more crimes, which they did over the weekend. We have... We've had several of the parents involved with these kids in this shooting this weekend asking us to arrest their kids, begging us to detain them because they can't control them and they're afraid they're going to get killed. As recently as Friday, this past Friday, we communicated that to the county attorney's office involving two of these individuals. But the county attorney's office isn't listening. The idea of catch and release with violent juveniles is not working. It's not fair to the kids involved or to the victims of serious crime. The time they spent detained would enable the system to identify resources to provide them to these kids instead of immediately releasing them right after they're arrested to go back into the same environment that produced the same result. We are referring youth offenders daily to community-based outreach resources. Additionally, we're referring kids to the county attorney's office diversion programs and other programs in the county. In fact, two of the kids involved in this incident are in the county attorney's office YGVI program. So for her to say anything else is simply not true. The county attorney's office is playing a dangerous game with these kids' lives 
And luckily, no one this weekend paid the ultimate price. But I'm afraid next time we might not be so lucky. Are there any questions? No, go ahead. But Mary Moriarty is grotesquely invested in the idea that uh, particularly children of color uh, do not commit crimes. They are merely acting out behaviors that have been driven by oppression. She has the interest. She does not have the interests of the citizenry at heart. She does not have safety at heart. She uh, is pursuing a grotesque and false ideology. Uh, O'Hara is not lying. I was going to ask, cause did you ask that question during the show or off the air yesterday? What question? Who's telling us the truth, O'Hara? Well, I believe O'Hara is telling us I the truth. I do, too. Yep, I do, too. And it's a shame the voters elected this woman, and uh, I, I have no idea why they did. But you're, you're, you're reaping the benefits of having her in office. And what it is is by making these kids so less than she is in fact placing them in danger she is in fact setting them up to be killed now she wouldn't look at it that way but that's exactly what's going to happen because as the chief says this time they were joy riding in a stolen kia and got shot next time the shooting might be more accurate hmm. and this is her fault this is her fault it's so bad it's to the point that it's to the point where parents have asked o'hara to please arrest my kid i, I a, yeah i wash my hands of this arrest That's my kid i don't know what the hell else to do right and they do and mary moriarty pursuing a very <laughs> grotesque and false ideology un-american uh unethical lacking all integrity lacking all morality, continues to look the other way. She is a terrible, terrible mistake. It shouldn't have happened, but unfortunately it has happened. I believe uh, I believe our attorney general weighed in on this. Well, her and Keith are in the state of Minnesota are operating arm in arm on this. And Keith, um, like a lot of people, consider the kids in the car innocent. Here's the tweet um, that, by the way, he was ratioed on this, which means he got more negative responses than he got positive. Here's this tweet from August 18th. The individuals who shot these children must be held accountable. I will also keep holding Kia and Hyundai for accountability for making their vehicles easy to steal and refusing to do anything meaningful about it. I won't stop until they do the right thing. So he's letting the kids in the car off the hook, kind of blaming the people that pulled the trigger, but really blaming Kia and Hyundai and he's, going well, after them. Because he's also pursuing a grotesque ideology. Look, uh, oh, I, I really hate myself when I say the word look, because that's what Democrats say. <laughs> Biden's all over that. Yeah. I am not suggesting that Minneapolis is uh, significantly unsafe. You can still go to a Twins game. You can still go out to dinner. And you know what? Chances are you'll be fine. I I'm not being facetious. Chances are you'll be fine. The point is that the crime will keep occurring. It will keep accru occurring among the most vulnerable people because the people in charge have no interest in disciplining them or holding them of consequence. What's going to happen in the country is it's go the country is going to run out of people who wish to be a police chief. The closer you get to the tallest buildings in this country, if those cities are, uh, uh, if those cities have in authority uh, Mysterians, you will notice a uh, you will notice the same crime problems. Generally speaking, is it you can you walk downtown and be safe? Of course, but the crime is being perpetrated among the people who can least afford to be victims of crime, and they're and they can least afford the absence of the help they're not getting. And it leads me to something I want to say about uh, last night's 
uh, speeches by Obamas. They they were powerful. They're very good speakers. But I got to thinking, uh, if Walls and Harris get elected, and I think there's a reasonable chance of that happening, don't you? Yeah. If they get elected, certain, but okay. I started thinking, what are the basic staples of life that identify us as Americans? Staff, anyone, anyone? What are the basic freedom? That's I will I will count that one, but okay. that's not necessarily a commodity. That's a uh, that's a virtue. Well, that's it a, is now. Yeah, but what what are the what are the things that that identify us? particularly in comparison to the rest of the world. Well, I'll just do it. We, we, have, we have enjoyed affordable fuel, right? Okay. For the most part, we've enjoyed affordable fuel, affordable food, affordable utilities, uh, a taxation that has allowed us to survive, even though taxes have increased. We enjoy property, and we enjoy the rule of law. Now, let's say Walls and Harris get elected, and one of their biggest pushes will be the Green New Deal. And the Green New Deal will serve to make gasoline more expensive. I think that's just factual because what they would stop, they would stop fracking. She's lying right now. She says she's for fracking, but she's not. It would stop fracking. It would it would frown on the development of fossil fuels. At the very least, the Green New Deal would frown on the development of fossil fuels, and that frowning would increase their availability. Is that a fair statement? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Mm -hmm. uh, food. I don't think food should under should fall under price controls. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. But if the Green New Deal is applied heavily to agriculture, for example, and there will become new limits on what you can use and what you cannot use in the field and on and on and on and on, food be could become more expensive. Utilities really dramatically impacted by the green new deal you you would have a situation where if it if it really f fell the way they want it to fall if you were solely dependent on solar and wind and you live in the state of minnesota i think it's fair i think it's a fair statement to say you would be routinely subjected to blackouts is that a fair statement you can't count on the sun in Minnesota in winter, and you the wind is uncontrollable. So you eliminate coal, you eliminate nuclear, you, you have the sun and the wind. What's going to happen? You're not going to have the power you need to heat your house or turn on your lights. All right, taxation. If it increases, it will serve to strip the typical American family of more of the money they have to buy gas, food, and utilities. So far, so good. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, property. Property is an identifier of the American populace. We 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 own property. It's a it's a, a keystone a feature of American life is to own property. If that becomes more difficult uh, via zoning changes and what have you, if more and more of this drive for sustainable housing is built and suddenly housing laws and city ordinances are leaned against the development of your own property, you'll slowly see the erosion of personal property. Is that a fair statement? Is that yeah, fair? That, along yeah. with high taxes. Yeah, is that fair? And yeah. then finally... Uh, what have we expected as Americans? We've expected the law to be followed. Is that a fair statement? Yes. We we ex we have always anticipated or expected that if your car is stolen, something will be done about it, including holding the theft the uh, the uh, purveyors of the theft accountable. The evildoers. Is that a fair Evil statement? Doer. Yeah. Okay. That's already not happening. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's say all of that happens. 
gas becomes prohibitively expensive, food becomes prohibitively expensive, utilities become unreliable, taxes go through the roof until you run out of the money, property, individual property ownership becomes questionable, if not difficult, and laws will continue to not uh, have as an equal component consequences for breaking them. Okay, what would be the purpose of that? If If that's brought about... What would be the purpose of it? Ruination. Reprogramming us. Reprogramming the great reset. The I think you're both on the right track. There, there can be no other purpose. There's no good in it. When you look at the American dynamic and the commodities and the lifestyle that Americans are used to in a great country, what good comes from making those com- commodities unavailable or scarce? What good comes from not holding lawbreakers accountable? What good comes from making uh, individual property ownership more available and free? What good comes from that? What good comes from a 20 below night in January when suddenly your lights flicker and your furnace turns off? What good comes from that? That's my question. It's not rhetorical. What good comes from that? No possible good comes from any of that. <clears throat> not for the citizenry, and I don't see how you can sell this as it being good for the government. How would that make us depend on them more, which I believe is their goal? They Everything they touch turns to shit. Yep. They're a disaster at everything they do. So how are they going to benefit? That's what I don't understand about where you're going here. They'll benefit by making the government the purveyor not the purveyor. What do I want? The provider. The provider of these commodities, and you will never have them in the amount you once did. Ever. Ever. How do they not realize that, though? Why and, do they and, think and, and as a result of not having them in the amount that you once did, you will be a lesser free person. No, yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, you will, you will be you will be starting to share misery more equally with your with your neighbors. Ooh. Now, the uh, the uh I suppose I suppose until they well, I don't even I, I so far I've kept this without hy- hyperbole. I want to keep it that way, so I'm not going to continue. Uh I I think I've stated something that's reasonable and something that needs to be considered seriously, that the hallmarks of American life, uh, we are being successfully sold, at least to half the country, we're being successfully sold that uh, somehow these provisions, these commodities, this kind of wealth and this kind of freedom has come at the expense of others, and it's unfair. It's unfair. We must repent, and you must listen to us as we know better how you should be leading your lives and know better how you should be leading your lives in order to account for the repenting that must be done. All, all in the name of merely installing them as, as essentially oligarchs. Hmm. But the day, like we said yesterday, the day that we reach the promised land never, ever comes. It's always give us four more years and we'll make it happen. And it never happens. How can they be so narcissistic to truly believe that they are going to help us dig out of this mythical hole we're because, in? Because for too long, the American populace has allowed politics, the politicians, to drift away and exist on their own rail. What they would like, the Democrats, that is, is the complete elimination of the Republican Party, and all conservatives, what good would that do the country? How would the country improve without another alternative voice? And I'll say the same thing about the Republicans if they want to get rid of the left and Democrats. How would that serve the greater good of the humanity in the United States? It would not. You know, it's a stupid question. But I, I say if Walls and Harris get elected, and I only say that because this is day 31, we have yet to hear one single word of what policy might look like. 
we are left to conclude what policy must look like. I don't think I've said anything unreasonable here. What do you well, think their policy would look like? You're correct about that. I thought it was interesting yesterday when we played that AOC cut, and that was the first I had ever heard that Kamala was involved in any kind of anything to do with the United States and government and, you know, goals that need to be achieved. I've never heard her mention anything, but I, I finally heard yesterday AOC bring up a few things, which was just painful irony. 